the very coveted last speaking spot in the entire conference. Um, so I apologize in advance for my very moody, fantastic looking slides that look really great on my MacBook screen and look horrendous in a well-lit room on a projector. So I just added, the, I have like this micro site that I wrote for the talk. I just added the, a link to the slides on there slash you might want to come forward because like got really nice dark mode looking code that's going to be fantastic uh, in this well lit room. Uh, but you can get the slides also uh, yourself right there if you want. Awesome. So we're going to talk about fuzzing frontiers today. Uh, my guarantee to you is that being that it's the last talk that the ratio of information to time you spend in this room will be the highest of any talk from the whole conference. Uh, and if I don't meet that, you can have a sticker uh, after the talk. And if I do meet that, you also can ha uh, have a sticker after the talk. Uh, so we're going to talk about what fuzzing is. Uh, we're going to talk about what nuclei is. Does anybody know what nuclei is? I thought maybe. That's why you like stuck around for the last talk. So that's cool. Uh, but we'll briefly touch on that. And then we'll talk about some changes we made recently uh, to what the fuzzing capabilities of nuclei, why I think those are important, do a little demo and then we can go have more drinks and, and go to the party. Um, so I think uh, this is probably the best quote to go along with uh, a discussion of fuzzing. Uh, and it's not really surprising that it actually comes from an ex-Secretary of Defense. Uh, you know, it talks about kind of directly what we're, we're thinking about when we're either doing offensive or defensive side of security. Um, like dealing with known knowns makes a lot of sense. There's vulnerabilities we know about. Uh, obviously, we want to deal with those. There's known unknowns, right? That's a vulnerability that comes out. Um, and so we know it exists, but maybe it's not fully understood yet or it's not fully mitigated or we don't know where it is in our environment, so we're not sure uh, if we've mitigated it yet or not. Um, but the most dangerous, if I'm on the defensive side, or maybe the most interesting, if I'm on the attacking side, are, are the unknowns unknowns, right? Like what is, what's not known about how this system is functioning? Um, and so that's, that's kind of where I wanted to start our, our time together. Uh, I'm Brendan O'Leary. I uh, run the community team at Project Discovery. Uh, we make tools like Nuclei, which you're all aware of, um, and uh, a, a number of other open source kind of offensive security tools like Subfinder and Katana and actually dozens of others. Um, I spent the last five years of my career before I came to Project Discovery at GitLab, so kind of more on the dev tools side, but spent the last year and a half really diving full into offensive security uh, at, with Project Discovery. And uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. And then eventually we'll kind of look at those new capabilities I, I talked about. But I want to kind of establish what I mean by fuzzing uh, for those who may not understand. Uh, and so I made these two great circles, although it actually is kind of a cool design choice that the black circle is actually like the whole screen. <laughs> um, but fuzzing is a, is a testing technique that tries intentionally to use unexpected or random or maybe not random but meaningful but not expected um, inputs into a system to try and uncover these kind of unknown sets of vulnerabilities. Uh, I think of it a lot like a toddler kind of like doing pressing every button to see what breaks. Uh, I have four kids at home and like I just think that that analogy really works pretty well for me because um, I think some of the largest vulnerabilities in our space are found this way, and, and definitely if you have a house and you put small children in it, some of the largest vulnerabilities in that house will be found that way. Um, you know, the, a classic example is Heartbleed, right? Like that was found through um, protocol fuzzing, right? Like fuzzing the TCP stack, the, the DTLS stack, uh, to see, you know, what happens if we send to this kind of innocuous uh, heartbeat uh, endpoint, uh, you know, an overflow, a, 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 an input that's longer than, than it's expecting, right? And if we're not careful about, you know, sanitizing inputs and caring about the length of payloads and those kinds of things, even in kind of a, a nothing query, right? Just a heartbeat query, uh, you can have this like major flaw that, you know, impacts the entire world. Uh, and so there's lots of vulnerability categories where fuzzy is useful. Um, I think, again, really almost any vulnerability category could be susceptible or, or benefit from you know, some level of fuzzing against it. Um, but I think some of the, the, the most like, interesting and most common are you know, those, those things that seek to inject you know, either code or commands or seek to inject SQL statements uh, into user input or unsanitized API input, inputs, those kinds of things. 
and then also, again, things that are going to try and overflow the buffer or, you know, send uh, an unexpected payload length and then get, you know, uh, an unexpected output and, and allow an attacker to, to move laterally. Um, and there's lots and lots of tools out there that focus on fuzzing. Some focus on, you know, low level fuzzing, uh, you know, at the, 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 the compiler level or the command line, the command uh, and, and code level. Uh, there's a lot of tools focused on web fuzzing, like FFUF is probably one of the most uh, popular. Uh, and I'm obviously very, very biased, but I'm excited to talk about what we've been adding to Nuclei as open source uh, around fuzzing. And so again, most folks in the, in, the, in the room knew what Nuclei is, but just briefly, there's a really cool globe there you can just imagine if you can't see it. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a flexible engine that can run uh, automated scans against uh, a large number of targets and in a large number of protocols. So there's lots of protocols it supports. It supports file-based protocols, DNS, TLS, network protocols, but you know, the most popular and where the most of the uh, kind of uh, time is spent is in HTTP uh, requests. Uh, and all of that is leveraging kind of a YAML-based template uh, structure, and it's all open source, right? So we have Nuclei itself is open source, the, the engine, but then also our, our community templates, of which there's like over, I think, eight or 9,000 now, um, are where the community can contribute templates that, that do these kinds of things and run you know, one of these requests to verify, you know, is something vulnerable to, to a given vulnerability. Uh, and just, you know, a few months ago, I think four months ago, we released uh, Nuclei version 3.2, which really brought a lot of very advanced fuzzing features. And that's what I kind of want to talk about how you can use today. Um, and I think there's kind of three capabilities that we thought about as we're building that out, right? So, what, what is critical for if we're fuzzing? And in this case, you know, again, let's focus on HTTP fuzzing for a second. Um, I think one is you want to be able to modify or fuzz any or multiple parts of the request, right? So I'm making a request to the application or to an API. I want to be able to be very specific about, you know, what parts of that request do I want to mess with? Um, I also want to target this, right? So I mean, just running any kind of vulnerability scanning can be really noisy, and now you're talking about fuzzing vulnerability scanning, you're talking about getting real noisy, right? Like if you're gonna run some massive word list or you're gonna try a whole bunch of different conditions. Um, so you wanna be pretty targeted in that. And, and so, you know, we really wanna like find, like how can we filter the, the requests that matter for this particular thing we're looking for? Uh, and then lastly, but maybe most importantly perhaps is like I have, I have came up with this concept actually for this talk of augmentation, greater being better than automation. Um, a lot of times people think of Nuclei, and it is this fantastic automation tool, uh, but I think in most cases, and most especially in this case, it's better to think of it as like an augmentation tool to what you're already doing, either as a security engineer or a bug bounty hunter. You know, it, it just integrates into the workflow. It's not like replacing what you're gonna be doing. Like I think anyone that's run you know, the basic set of nuclei templates against a, you know, public bug bounty program, you know, probably knows that that, like, we all still have other jobs. That's not like just a money printing machine that you would wish it could be. Um, so I think, I think it's really best to think about this. And so we're gonna look at some really simple examples, but I'm hoping that I can inspire you to really think about what can you do um, that's more specialized, that's more focused on the targets you have, more focused on what you're trying to protect, um, kind of leveraging this same thing. So hopefully I can convince you of that with a couple demos. Um, but first, let's talk about what I mean by the entire request. Um, so this is just a, a raw representation of an HTTP request. Um, and, you know, again, we, we want to be able to fuzz all the parts of this. So not just the path or query string, which is kind of what you typically think of with fuzzing. You also want to be able to fuzz against, you know, headers, right? If there's custom headers and APIs and or, you know, again, this is where bringing your brain to, wait, what is this application expecting is going to really help you uh, target this, right? Like what custom headers might be interesting to fuzz or the cookie itself uh, that would be interesting to look at or the body, right? Like if there's requests that are being made in the body of the request, a post request or something like it, you know, what can we do um, to, to, tr to play with that and see uh, what, we, what we might be able to find? And then that second most important thing, or second uh, point I said in the in design is, 
you know, targeting uh, the fuzzing. So, you know, you, again, you really want to make sure, you know, you don't want to necessarily alert a WAF uh, to the fact that you're fuzzing because now you're sending, you know, a bajillion requests to it, which is, a, is the technical term, bajillion. Um, you also, you, you know, and that might be important if you're a bug bounty hunter, right, because you might not want to set off alarms, but it's also important, I think, if you're uh, a pen tester or, or a red team member because, you know, you're going to have to expect that attackers are going to be more sophisticated than that. And so you want to try to think like how they're going to think and, and try to get around the defenses uh, the same way a real attacker would. Um, so one of the things we introduced uh, in this version is this, this concept of precondition. Uh, and so that's, you know, we're going to run before I start fuzzing for a given request, like are the preconditions met? Uh, and this basically, again, if you know Nuclei a lot, I could spend a long time on this, but it basically is the same technology as our matchers to say, hey, is this request going to be worth fuzzing? Uh, and before you start, you know, pounding this endpoint, like make sure uh, we really want to, right? So here in this um, simple example, we can see, okay, we want to only do it for post methods if the body is greater than zero, right? Like, so this is obviously looking at something that has a body uh, in the request. And so if, we're, if we don't have that, we don't want to just overload uh, our target with that. And, and again, that can help with this, this risk of uh, getting banned. And then this is going to be the best looking slide. <laughs> uh, so this is, this is putting all that, those, those, those things together into an entire template. And again, on that website, there's all these examples are there. Um, but we can see the preconditions, the same ones we saw before. Um, and then we can see this payload section, right? So this is what we're going to inject uh, as our fuzzing payloads, right? And they can, you can have multiple ones here. Injection is actually like the, the variable name I'm going to be using later on uh, to do it. And here we can see we're trying to, you know, do some pretty basic kind of SQL injection stuff, right? Like what happens if I send it a semicolon, right? And then the fuzzing section is where we define, okay, where and how are we going to fuzz this request, right? And so here we can see the part is the body, right? So again, we talked about the different parts that we can do. And then this text, which is literally impossible for you to read, um, is about where are we going to fuzz it. So here we can see it says type postfix, um, but the other types, since you can't read them, uh, are you know prefix, postfix, replace, infix, or replace with a regex. So this is like how are we going to do it? Are we putting it at the end of the query or at the end of the body? Or are we replacing the entire body? Um, or are we inserting it into the middle? Um, so in this case, we're saying postfix, like after the body, put this this injected thing, and then are we replacing one thing at a time or multiple, that's this mode. Uh, and then the, the fuzz is the, the actually using then that injection variable that I defined there. All right, so that's great in theory. Um, and we're going to look at an example again that's going to be kind of hard to read, but let's talk about um, looking for local file inclusions, right? So obviously we don't want attackers to get access to our file system. Uh, you know, that could be not great. They could get access to critical files, to environmental variables, to move laterally to other systems. Um, and so in this template, um, you know, we can see that we're, we're going to be fuzzing different uh, file paths into the query string to see if we can do directory traversal to then, you know, get access to a, a local file. And then the demo is going to actually be easier to see, I hope. Um, well, interestingly, I'm behind it. Uh, we'll start to, we'll wait for it to restart, but it, it did work. Um, do, 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 do. So here I'm at the end, I'm going to curl. So we can see that I'm running Nuclei, and we'll, we'll see it in a second. I'm, I'm going to wait for it to restart here. I'm running, running Nuclei against the same microsite that we talked about that is going to respond with what looks like uh, a local file so that Nuclei uh, it gets upset about it and, and tells us about it. Um, but first we can see I've got the, the URL here as my target. So you, the URL with this query string of file at the end. Then I'm going to tell Nuclei I'm going to use this local template, and I'm throwing this DAST flag in there to say go ahead and run fuzzing uh, against it. And we can see it ran a number of, of uh, different, three different uh, variations, and on this last one here, it had a match. And then to show that match, I'm just going to curl that same exact uh, URL that it found uh, with a match, and we'll see it returns what looks like an Etsy password file, um, and that's why Nuclei was uh, a little concerned about it. 
uh, you know, another, again, another, uh, uh, the second example I want to show is around, you know, SQL injection. So we looked in that first uh, example about how we might be able to, you know, inject uh, different parts of uh, SQL commands. Uh, and this is in our template repo, maybe one of the most extensive set of commands because we have a lot of uh, possible responses from all the different kinds of uh, SQL interpreters out there that it's going to look for when we're running these kind of SQL command injections. So again, you can't see it great, but we're going we're gonna to put that into a, a different query string uh, and run those um, same SQL special characters, including um, a, uh, a semicolon. I don't know why it doesn't, it starts in the, in the beginning for me and at the end for you. It's very interesting. Um, but here, we'll, we'll start over again here. So again, same, same concept of passing uh, the URL uh, with this query string and then using this, the different template, which again, you can find the example on the website, passing the DAST, it's going to run those different kinds of uh, injections that we had. And then here you can see with a semicolon, it found something. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy that URL and curl that again to just see what that output was. And we can see once we get that, that it was a, you know, looks like a um, Ruby on Rails Postgres error, uh, which means I might have the ability to, to, to run nefarious SQL commands there. Uh, so that's it conceptually. And then the, the one last thing I want to hit on is, you know, this, this concept of augmented automation, um, right? Those, those, what we just saw with like super simplified views, like what's the quick thing I could do at a B sides at, 615 to show you what it looks like. But I think in applying this to the real world, that last key of augmented automation really comes in. And so we were passing Nuclei in those two examples just a URL, which is, okay, that's great. I could have curled it and did curl it just as easily. Um, but the, the input that Nuclei can take is also a list. But more importantly, with this latest version, can take things from, it can start from like your open API spec or Swagger spec and use that as its base for what am I going to fuzz against, right? Or take the output from other project discovery uh, open source tools like uh, tools like HTTPX or Proxify or Katana and take that as my input, right? And then I understand like what are all the, the query parameters that, I, that I, I was able to find or even better output from Burp Suite. So if I'm clicking around and, and doing some of that manual exploration, but then want to fuzz against all of the things that I found while I was doing it, I can just take the output from Burp Suite put it right into Nuclei and fuzz against it. Um, so again, I think that's where the real power is going to come when folks are able to do that. Again, you can see lots of examples of this on our repository, uh, but I think doing, you know, using these kind of tools to augment what you're already doing, either in penetration testing or in defending, uh, is where this really becomes powerful. So great. Like I said, you can uh, go check out fuzzbuzz.vercel.app. Um, it's not actually vulnerable, at least to my knowledge, because it's on Vercel. Um, but it responds with some vulnerable queries and walks you through kind of the three, the two examples that we saw uh, in the presentation. And it also has links to these slides, uh, to our documentation on fuzzing, to a blog that our engineering team wrote uh, when we released it, and also to our Discord server if you have any questions afterwards. Uh, so yeah, and I think we have a couple, couple minutes for questions if anyone wants. Thanks so much.